My name is Ebenezer Amwako Entry, and you are so welcome to this YouTube channel. On this YouTube channel, you are going to get videos that will set you up in your work with God and also with your prayer life. On this channel, you upload videos consistently to make sure that believers are guided to pray and pray and pray. If you are new to this YouTube channel, make sure that you subscribe to the YouTube channel so that when we upload new videos, you can have access to them. And also, if you don't understand anything, kindly send us a message and we will get back to you. Also, make sure that this video you are about to watch, you will like the video, try and comment on it. And when you are blessed by the video, make sure that you share it to someone. Thank you. One of the interesting scenarios in the Bible is Exodus chapter 24, verse 9. A very interesting subject. Let me take my time here. Exodus chapter 24, verse number 9. Then went up Moses and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel. You know, the people of Israel were numbering up to millions. Then God wanted to have fellowship with a few of them. And then God chose 70 people together with about four. So they were like 74. And he took them away from the multitude. And ask them to come to the mountain Sinai and leave the rest at the bottom of the mountain. Listen to me and listen to me well. God has never dealt with a whole group in the same measure before. God will always select some people. It has never happened. He is not partial. But he always has deeper intimacy with some than others. So he chooses the 70 something. And he said, climb up, I want to really discuss some few things with you. So God's intention was not to only speak to Moses. His intention was to speak to all the elders and to teach all the elders his principles and his laws that he wants to give to the children of Israel. So he picks them up to the mountain. And then the Bible said when they got to the top of the mountain, which they thought that was, that was the top, topmost level. God will never show you what is ahead. So you may be tempted to think you have arrived. So the moment the 74 got there, they thought they've reached to the uh, top of the mountain. And the Bible says in the verse number 10, let, let me read it, verse number 10. And they saw the God of Israel. This God that Moses has been preaching about. This God that Abraham saw this God that Jacob saw this God that interacted with Isaac now the 70 people are seeing this God and there was under his feet as it were a paved work of a suffering stone and as it were the body of heaven in his cleanness so this was not just a dream this was a physical thing they were seeing God they were seeing his feet, seeing his whole body. Awesome. What a privilege. And upon the nobles of the children of Israel, he laid not his hand. Also they saw God and did eat and drink. This is a God nobody sees in his glory. The Bible says anyone that sees his glory should die. Even their father Abraham saw him as a human figure. Jacob saw him as a human figure. But these 74 people saw him in his glory. They saw him as a heavenly body. They saw his feet like brass. This is my glory. And then when he thought they could have hosted his presence so beautifully. When he thought they could have forgotten about everything and focused on him. The Bible says that they saw God and did eat and drink. You see God standing with you, wishing to communicate with you. And bread is at one left, drink is at one right. You are comfortably eating in the presence of God. And the Bible said God did not lay hands on them. In other words, they deserve to die. But God decided not to kill them. Pleasure. This is the reason why many people have shouted to God, but have never seen his glory all their years. This is the th reason why people got so close to receiving a dimension of God's power but it never came these people got so close but for pleasure's sake how can you be seeing God and you are still wishing to eat 
And the Bible says, upon all their mistakes, God did not kill them. But God did something. You see, God can be very tolerant, but he is not careless enough to entrust valuable things into on the, the hands of unworthy people. God is never that careless. Keep being careless. Just, just keep be, being, being whoever you are. Keep drinking, keep fornicating, and keep, continue to defend it with the message of grace. Keep doing all kinds of things. Keep stealing, keep doing everything you want and keep defending it. There is a God you are serving. He is very tolerant, but he is not careless to deal with unworthy people. That is why Paul says that live worthily according to the vocation that the Lord has given you. Live worthily of it. And the Bible says God did something very simple. He now chose somebody out of them. And the Lord said unto Moses, Come up to me unto the mountain and be there. I will give thee tables of stone and a law and commandments which I have written that thou mayest teach them. These people are not worthy to do businesses with me. Now let me choose only Moses. And tell Moses what I want the people to know. And then Moses will come and teach them. This was an opportunity for 70 something people to be teachers of Israel. But they missed it because of pleasure. Let's fast. I can't fast. Let's be consecrated in a season like this. I can't be consecrated. It is in such seasons that God separates boys from men. This was a time when the food was served and the one person who didn't touch food and touch drink was Moses. God said, Moses, come. Come. It is in this place where frontliners and pace setters and leaders and teachers are born. People who are masters of the kingdom are born. Anytime you see anyone with the career of unusual anointing, there is something the person has pursued and there is something the person has overcome. That is pleasure. He said, leave them. Come to the mountain and be there. Isolation. Just be there. Without anybody, just be there. People who really have businesses with me are people who have their power to separate from things. When God wanted to do great things with David, he separated David from his family. When God wanted to do great things with Joseph, he separated him. When God wanted to do great things with Paul, he separated him. There are things that does not happen with people who join the majority. To mess up. He separated Moses. And he said, I want to give you the loss. I wanted to deal with national issues with the 70, but they are not worthy. I want to give you the Lord. May God help us. Teachers don't just come. Healers don't just appear. Kingdom wealthy men and women, they don't just appear. They are people who can be isolated from the masses. In that place of isolation, listen to me. When God is dealing with people and he has to separate them, sometimes we don't get it, but do you think Moses didn't want to be part of the eating? Do you think Moses didn't want to be part of the drinking? When God separated him from them, he spent 40 days, 40 nights without food and water. That means what God was not comfortable with was the fact that he is standing there and the people were eating. So he separated somebody who could survive 40 days, 40 nights without food. I'm talking about people that God really, God really, God really is looking into 20 years, 30 years, 40 years into this generation. And he's looking for someone, just one person, who can avail himself and say that in the dispensation of social media, in the dispensation of Netflix, in the dispensation of all articles and novels and books and all kinds of things in this dispensation i choose to be in his presence come up and be there in a dispensation where everybody will want to date a girl or one or two 
in a dispensation where everybody wants to feel good with hip hop and hip life on their on their mobile phones and with pornography and the rest and, and you decide to separate yourself and be there just be there it is a season of pain and sorrow I'm sure within the 40 days God didn't just appear Moses was there 10 days God had not appeared again and Moses will be asking himself what am I doing here then God appears and begin to release things into the hands of Moses things into the hands of Moses that will change Moses and the nation's life forever there are many of us crying out many of us praying God when will you use me God when will you when will you bless my family God when will you use me like David when will you lift me up like Joseph the mystery is simple can you separate from pleasure can you withdraw from this age of entertainment and stand in the presence of God day and night can you sacrifice telenovelas to read the Bible continuously for one hour can you stay in his presence in prayer for two hours three hours can you put off your phone for meditation's sake can you the top of the mountain is for men who can master the realm of isolation who sees entertainment but does not love entertainment yes who have pleasure to want to have sex in their age but have to sacrifice that pleasure people who have pleasure to want to have peer groups and the time to come to church do you know that there are some people here right now who should be in church but right now they are in their bed what's happening and they will live there go for prophetic services and think that that is how god works the fact that they were called and say eyes we see that in your whole family you will be the greatest what a deception didn't you see that your father received that same prophecy but ended poor Go into the archives of your mother and you'll see that in her diary she has about 10 prophecies and she's almost 75 and none has come to pass. It's not that the prophets were wrong but there was no teacher to teach them to align to the principles of God. And you are also repeating the same error. You are also repeating the same error. Choosing entertainment over God. Choosing pleasure over God. Choosing sleep over prayer. Choosing novels over Bible and spiritual books. You are repeating the same error. Food and drink and sex and um, dating and all kinds of things. And you are following the same error. Can't you see that your destiny is at stake? Can't you see that your fellowship and your growth and your business with God is at stake? I hope you enjoyed this video. And I believe that you were blessed. If um, you were blessed by this video, make sure that you click on the share button and share it to a friend. And also make sure that you like the video so that YouTube can recommend this video to other people so that they can also be blessed by the message. If you have any question, please make sure that you contact us and we'll get back to you. And also if you are watching this video and you don't know Jesus Christ, ask the Lord and personal Savior. I want you to make that decision. Just contact us in the description. Call us and let us lead you to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. And lastly, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on the, that notification bell icon. Turn it on so that when new videos are uploaded, you can be notified. Thank you so much and see you in our next video and prayer section. Bye.